nights on the south today. A southern milk processing factory takes a big leap towards environmental sustainability. Clips and glamour from around the country is on display at the annual Hokanui Fashion Awards in Boa. And an enthusiastic group of brave souls make a splash at the Lake Hawea Winter Polar Plunge. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. A new boiler is being commissioned into service at a milk powder plant near Clydevale. Owned by the French multinational food products corporation called Danone, the new boiler aims to reduce the plant's carbon footprint by at least 90%. Getting installed and fired up at Danone's Clydevale plant. This new boiler will eventually power much of the milk powder factory near Belclutha with water heated by burning forestry waste material. The company's planning for the new boiler to be integrated into the factory by the middle of next month. It will gradually take over from the current LPG powered boiler as part of the company's goal to become carbon neutral. The idea is that it's going to fully replace our LPG boiler as the main steam supply to the site um, and that's going to allow us to reduce our carbon footprint by 90 to 95 percent. The boiler will only burn debris from forests that are certified as being renewable. The director of the milk powder plant says part of Danone's goal is caring for the planet and giving back to the New Zealand dairy industry. The dairy industry is a key uh, driver of the country. Uh, we do want to ensure that we bring value and our competency uh, across Danone to uh, New Zealand as a, a country as well. The boiler has an emissions control unit to collect ash waste and the company's aiming to find ways of repurposing that as well. In Clydevale, the South today. Thousands of power have washed up dead and dying on Catlin's beaches in recent days. Local residents at Kaka Point discovered the shellfish and other marine animals piled up on the shore after a heavy tide. Similar mass deaths occurred in other years, but residents say it has never been this bad. The Ministry for Primary Industries says the die-off is likely due to natural events. MPI says that power do not fare well in fresh water. Heavy rainfall and easterly sea conditions may have caused large amounts of fresh water from the Clutha River to be pushed into the coastal waters, killing the shellfish. The annual Hokanui Fashion Design Awards in Gore on Saturday night were sold out for the first time in the event's 33-year history. Organisers say the popularity of Saturday night's gala event was unprecedented, with all seats snapped up within 13 minutes. Sold out for the first time in 33 years. Crowds packed the MLT Hokanui Fashion Design Awards Gala Night in Gore on Saturday. This year's event featured more than 250 garments with well over a thousand people attending across both Friday and Saturday nights. One of the judges was Steve Dunstan, who is a founder of the New Zealand streetwear brand called Huffer. He says it's important designers take into account how clothing might be made on a commercial scale. You know, creativity is such a massive part of it, but also having the um, understanding of the commercial side of it, the execution, how you put the garment together. The winner of this year's Award of Excellence was Shito Chawala, who was able to follow her love of fashion and start studying five years ago, thanks to the encouragement of her husband. I did so many courses, uh, different, different courses, but I never thought that I will end up here. I, I just wanted to do it as being creative. Among the other winners was Gore local Viv Tamblin, who took out the Peroni Glamour Award with her red flowered pattern dress and matching face mask. In Gore, the South today. There's been a timely graduation in central Otago, with potential new employees looking for jobs at the right time. 120 students graduated from Queenstown Resort College on Friday with diplomas in hospitality and adventure tourism management, along with graduate diplomas in similar fields. 
The college also handed out certificates in leadership and performance for the first time, aimed at upskilling or reskilling workers in other areas of business. College Chief Executive Charlie Phillips told graduates their future was bright. There are a number of vacancies in the tourism and hospitality sector after New Zealand's borders fully opened to all visitors at midnight on Sunday. A ward at Southland Hospital has been closed to visitors due to COVID-19 and influenza exposure events. Te Whatu Ora South, uh, Southern says visiting has been temporarily suspended to the assessment, treatment and rehabilitation ward from this afternoon until further notice. All necessary steps are being taken to ensure the exposure events are contained. This includes closely monitoring patients for signs and symptoms of COVID-19 and influenza and ensuring staff are well when they come to work. They've apologised for the inconvenience to patients in the ward and their families. Limited visiting t uh, during this time is available on compassionate grounds. A Palmerston woman celebrated a 10-year anniversary with a difference on Sunday. Sonia Watson had her hair shaved off to mark a decade of raising money for breast cancer, a disease she herself has faced and conquered. She says breast cancer is one that has affected many other people in her life. Yes, I've had breast cancer, yeah. um, but, but I had an easy case of breast cancer. I had a double mastectomy, but um, lots oh, wow. of friends and my mum, so yeah. But yeah, there's lots of people. Over the previous nine years, the event has raised more than $30,000. And a further $13,000 was raised yesterday. <laughs> Lake Howear residents took a cold plunge on Sunday to help raise funds for their local community centre. About 30 brave souls took a leap of faith into the chilly waters near the Lake Howear Dam. Lake Hawea residents took a long walk off the Lake Hawea jetty at the boat ramp near the dam, ready to plunge into the not quite freezing lake water. Really cold. <laughs> the average, I think the temperature today was um, 8.6 degrees, so pretty cold. Polar Plunge organiser Anne-Marie Chatterton was among those who leapt into Lake Hawea on Sunday. She says the event is a fundraiser for the local community centre, as well as an event to welcome new people to the area. So all of the funds for the donations for today um, go towards the community centre and the um, general maintenance and promotion of events to help keep the community together. And About 60 people attended the event, with many of the winter bathers wearing fancy dress outfits. Once in the water, they took a five metre swim to shore, before being welcomed into the embraces of people holding blankets and towels. Most then warmed up with hot drinks and food. However, a few jumpers had a second or even a third go. In Lake Hawea, the South Today. <laughs> FA Yakane, still to come on the South Today. Teams from across the country battle it out on the ice in Naseby. And Kate Bush fans paint the octagon red for the most Wuthering Heights day ever. Great Britain has a collection of varied landscapes and countryside to rival anywhere else in the world. And the best way to see it is to walk. Brace yourself for a chilly weekend at My Mate John's. His price freeze catalogue is out now. And it's chock full of red hot deals on rock bottom warehouse price furniture and beds with 36 months interest free to boot. No one has more choices and no one beats John on price. Plus, he's got it in stock and ready to rock. Price freeze. Where'd you get that furniture from? Stafford Street and my mate John. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals.
a mate and thinking about getting a new ute. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Tēnā welcome back. Experience was key as the ice heated up in Naseby. The 2022 New Zealand Mixed Doubles Qualifier was held at the Naseby Indoor Curling Rink at the weekend, with 16 teams battling it out on the rink. Curling is all about being on target. In Naseby over the weekend, places in the National Doubles squad were up for grabs, with the winners set to curl off to see who goes to the World Champs in Korea next year. Chief umpire Darren Carson says there are competitors on the ice with international experience. We've got Sean and Bridget, uh, they've won a, a silver medal at a world championship before. I've done really well at other, other world championships. Um, Dobby and Natalie, they went to the last world championships and they, they did pretty well. Um, Anton and Courtney have been to a championship, they've done well. We've, we've got the teams out there that everybody's looking over the shoulder, it's, it's great to have that depth. As with other sports involving a target, the closest object to the centre wins. During the weekend's competition, Carson had to get out a specialised tool to measure the distance between two stones. He says in his decade of ruling on international competitions, he's only seen dead even stones three times, once at Olympic level. It's usually within a few millimetres up to a centimetre and after that the players can tell themselves. When it gets tight like that, you just have to keep um, going round with the measuring tool and seeing if you can get a, a difference. If you can't, you just got to call it an even measure. You, you can't make a decision otherwise. In the end, it was the experienced pairing of Mania Toto siblings Jess and Ben Smith who qualified in the top spot with a score of 7 and 0. Carson was pleased with the record number of people entering the event, with 16 pairs, the largest number, stepping up to help their stones to fly right on the ice. In Naseby, the South today. South Island's Kate Bush fans showed off their red dresses and willingness to dance in Dunedin's Octagon over the weekend. Wuthering, 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 Called the most Wuthering Heights Day ever, the internationally celebrated event coincides with Kate Bush's birthday. Participants came from as far away as Nelson, Queenstown and Uwamaru to dress up in red to recreate one of the promotional videos for the 1978 hit song. Now in its fourth year, the event saw about 75 people taking part on Saturday. The event also serves as a fundraiser for a wellness charity with about $800 being raised. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The Southern Milk Processing Factory has taken a massive leap toward environmental sustainability with a new way to dehydrate milk. Glitz and glam from around the country was on display at the annual Hokanui Fashion Awards in Goa with a young Auckland designer taking out the top award. And about 30 brave souls made a, a splash at the Lake Hawea Polar Winter Plunge, raising money for the town's community centre and some returning for seconds. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. And we welcome the Deputy Editor, Craig Page. Kia ora, Craig. Good evening. Now, what can we expect in the paper tomorrow? Um, there's some new research out from Otago University, which could uh, give some hope to those suffering from Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. um, the researchers have discovered a neuroprotective brain protein, um, which has the potential to uh, to delay or, re or reverse the onset of Alzheimer's. So, wow, that's yeah, a big it is, development. It is big. I mean, there's no effective treatment for the disease at the moment, so mm -hmm. this is really huge, as you can imagine. Um, early days but things are really looking promising there, so we've got Fantastic. full wrap on that. Um, you may recall last week we had a spectacular photo of a washed up whale near Warrington Beach. Mm -hmm. um, now it's causing concerns with local service, surfers who, uh, who fear that it may become a bit of an attractive target for uh, white, uh, great white sharks. Ah, good area. point. 
Yeah. Um, they, they say that the carcass could remain there for months, and of course, as the water warms as well, mm. um, people out in the surfing say, so, yeah, some real issues there. They're asking doctor to either remove the carcass by towing it out to sea or bury it. So uh, right, hopefully okay. we'll get some resolution on that. Yep. Uh, travel, seven days cycling holiday uh, through Kaikoura and the Molesworth Station. Stunning. Yeah, it was. Uh, not during winter, as you can imagine, but um, yes. yeah, some really spectacular <laughs> photos there. And uh, plenty of Commonwealth Games coverage in our sports uh, section as well. We catch up with the family of Southland cyclist Corbin Strong, who won gold in the scratch race. Yeah, that was um, fantastic, overnight. wasn't it? So, yeah, so they're pretty chuffed, as you can imagine. So. Brilliant. Oh, we look That's forward us. to reading all of that in your paper tomorrow, Craig. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoleMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, strong northwesterly winds will be up to gale force in many areas tomorrow. Rain will be heavy inland briefly with snow on the ranges and several more days of northwest winds to follow later in the week. Heading to the top of the South Island, strong northwesterlies and cloudy for Nelson with a high of 17 tomorrow. Greymouth gets a high of 14 with heavy rain and gusty northerlies, while Christchurch can expect an overcast and windy day with a high of 17 degrees. Travelling through South Canterbury and North Otago, wet with northwesterlies through here tomorrow. Ashburton and Timaru will both get a high of 16, while Awamaru can expect a top temperature of 15 degrees. Westwards now to the central lakes, and there's gusty northwesterlies and heavy rain on the way. Wanaka will get up to 10, 8 for Queenstown, and Alexandra can expect a high of 11 degrees. Heading further south, more showers and northwesterly gales will rip through here. Valclutha, Gore and the Catlins are all heading for a high of 13 degrees tomorrow. And down to the deep south, rain tonight in Invercargill with strong northwesterlies and a low of 11. That rain should clear to showers tomorrow with an overcast outlook and northwest winds. Expect a low of 10 and a high of 13. Wednesday will be windy with strong to near gale westerlies and frequent showers, a low again of 10 and up to 14 degrees as the high. And lastly, heading to Dunedin. Thick high cloud tonight, dropping down to 10 degrees. Tomorrow's looking cloudy with rain on the ranges and very strong northwesterlies, which will knock things around a bit. A low of 11 and a high of 15. And by midweek, it should be fine again with the sun out and broken high cloud. But those fresh northwest winds will still be about, down to 7 as the low, with a high of 16 degrees on Wednesday. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite a popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.